and welcome again to adventure story channel videos today my dear friends we will have a tour together and i will explain what things and what we see on the engine room when we are making your round and how important is uh, that things so let's start let's start we are going to the engine room So let's enter inside. We will see many, many things together. We will stand, we will pass a video, and we will check exactly what we are looking and for what reason we are doing that thing. So as you can see, I close the door at the back of me. All the doors must be closed because there are fire doors also and we must maintain them as much as possible so everything is in operation now condition as you can see here we are going down to the ladder and we have here these three uh, remote control valves uh, switches so these switches here they, they will activate uh, the firefighting system the water mist system so remotely you can make release from here because you have a very good view of the engine room you can determine where is the fire and this is a very very nice solution that gave in that vessel uh, i would like to inform you that when i arrived in this engine room here was really really dark because um the people uh, working there use to not replace the lamps and after i came on board i helped also the electrician together and the electrician will replace all the lights so the engine room directly change its uh, total view it became more bright so as you can see here this is our switches so to start the system you just need to turn to the right incinerator main engine and auxiliary boiler can be controlled here also purifier was under a water mist control and also diesel generator areas and here you can see also the emergency escape breathing device which is also there so we enter inside the engine control room here we have also a panel of water mist so you can activate it from here and you can check if the system is operated here we have um, some panel for the control of the engine we have engine interface control unit here inside the engine control room and i believe for the most of the panel this is the best place because there is air condition and so everything will be cooled down less vibration so let's make it a little bit the noise so here as you can see we have also switch for the lights uh, during the night time we can switch off the lights and as I have seen from the generator panel here all these lights here it's about one kilowatt so uh, it will save a lot of kilowatt hours of uh, fuel will be burned not only here also in the accommodation so as you have seen here I have the alarm in my cabin so the first thing when uh, the duty engineer going down it's to inform the bridge that he's located down and also um, to remove the alarm in case that if the alarm coming and the person falling down or something happen the alarm after 15 minutes will sound uh, on the bridge so this is kind of dead man alarm but here i 
have not seen um, that kind of the switch button that we have in the previous vessel it was a little bit different so this vessel uh, is made in Japan really my experience from Japanese vessel is not so good because they do not have a lot of things they do not have a lot of uh, items on board the vessel a lot of things missing like pressure gauges uh, some remote control valves a lot of things are missing it's very very cheap uh, constructions and if you compare with Korean Korean it's much much better so the only thing that we can be proud is for the citizen um, watch or clock how you can say that and we have two panels here we have two monitors where we can see the alarms from let's see okay the vasculator here the vasculator as you can see uh, we try to achieve uh, our set point it's 12 but we have 14 and our temperature is 101 so when we receive our fuel um, chemical analysis we will have also suggested a burning temperature on the diesel generator and main engines we will have uh, the purification temperatures which we will need to keep and also the storage temperatures inside a uh, bunk bunker tanks so if we will as you can see here this symbol which is uh, some arrows here this means that we have in auto control and if you if you would like to take this controller in uh, hand you'll need to press this button so here will appear a hand a symbol like that and then you can control by opening and closing by these arrows the steam valve the steam valve which supplies the steam to the heater and then will heat um, your fuel so there is two heaters number one and number two as always most of the vessels are uh, constructed the same so let's move on there is also indication that the cost is high it's different also we have some indications here about main engine fuel pressure and also main engine fuel temperature and also we can compare both what we have from the vasculator and also from the monitor we can also um, check the viscosity here and also this pressure it's really, really important to check uh, during your duty or during the morning time when you're going to the engine room because there is some filters that need to be cleaned and most of the problems that you can have from the filters can be also the pump seals because as you know if the pump suction will be uh, too negative so the pump will be pressed excessively so it will be also overloaded all the equipment all the shaft all the motor the bearing that's why it's really really important to clean the filters i have seen engineers that they say hey, why we will clean the filters let's say third engineer or fourth engineer in a previous uh, company they say why well, we will clean the filters we are not for the filters here and they cannot understand really really the problem so the filters it's really really important and as second engineer in this vessel in bulk area also I have to clean the filters okay I never said that I will not uh, clean the filters okay so everybody must understand the 
the assignment or the work and there is not something when you assign to do the job of fourth engineer or third engineer you must know that this also will be included so there is not any excuse about that so when you are going on board you have to do that job and there is not any excuses so if somebody do not like to make their job that they are assigned for or they do not like to follow the second engineer or chief engineer instruction it's better to go home and somebody else will come and will clean that filters so uh, we can see another things here we have uh, some indication of uh, status uh, that our managing heavy fill oil is on use managing diesel oil it's not used we have also which tank we use uh, which heavy fill oil service tank we use because in that vessel we have two tanks for usage but we change to another tank because we do not have drain somebody blind the drain of the service tank and that's why we change over to another tank uh, another thing that we had with that service tank what we make here this one uh, have the drain okay it's okay so you can drain you can check also your tanks and this is the normal procedure and the other tank uh, what we did uh, we purify the heavy fuel oil we purify and the heavy fuel oil will be there standby in any case that is necessary to use let's say rough weather or something else so i had one chief engineer that he came on board and he say for what reason we keep a uh, two service tank full so uh, my excuse for that was that in case that your purifier have some problem or let's say you are in bad weather and you need to supply the service um, direct the heavy filler for service tank you can open and you can supply without any delay so you have additional time to make any repairs or uh, let's say your purifier or you are in rough weather so you have some safety margin and he said to me that it's not necessary to keep the fuel there okay i really really don't understand and that guy was really really a uh, old chief engineer he have probably 15 years old i don't understand really um, for what reason he told that and as i have seen also he try always to make let's say to um, give let's say some additional load to the person that was uh, before or not, not the load okay no, not the load let's say um, he, he always said like that that why you didn't fix before <laughs> and it was really really funny because when we arrived on the vessel the vessel itself had a lot of problems that was unsolved for years and the person that was on board there the person that was on board there for months let's say 11 months or 10 months they do not do nothing they only produce more and more problems but this is how this company is working and this is uh, the personnel that they keep on board and this is the truth and the only thing that they can do they can manipulate the companies they can manipulate also the crew managers so they will get them and they will stay there for 10 or 11 months without doing anything so like that 
it cannot be a progress for sure. And many, many things we found when we was on board. For sure, we do not have any support from the office, as I have seen. And this was really, really tragic. Also, one another problem that we have faced was with um, ordering parts, spare parts, was really, really difficult. Uh, because there is not a system, as I have used, a system that includes all the spare parts and directly you can make your requisition. So we get 10 or 15 years back. With this system, in nowadays, you cannot work, for sure. Uh, the port is fast, it fast. the discharging procedure is fast, the loading the, between ports, uh, daytime is limited. So you have to look for the safety of the vessel and the operation of the vessel more than uh, the maintenance. So we have seen also that which fuel booster pump are running here. We can see here. And one moment, I will turn it back. Okay, we can see also which fuel booster pump is running. Uh, I have seen a lot of deviations uh, through the running hours so what i'm planning to do always and what i plan to do is to keep as much as possible the running hours between the pumps and the machinery as much as possible close so do not leave a really really big uh, difference between them and also sometimes when you are coming on board i have said that one when you see a big difference between pumps that shows that something is going wrong or the pump is not working or there is some problem with the pump and cannot deliver the pressure that is set for so as you can see we have also fuel circulating pump and in this system we have we had uh, the same exactly fuel system with diesel generator and this is the first time that I have seen that because in the Korean vessels we have separate system and separate pumps, separate heaters. Here we have everything the same. And one problem that we get when the fuel it was necessary to heat up to 120 or 125 degrees, it was really, really difficult in cold conditions and what we did, we used two heaters. Two heaters was uh, quite enough to reach that um, temperature. So uh, after using two heaters, chief engineer told me that we need to inspect one of the heater. And I explained to him that was not necessary to remove the heaters as we was running on the diesel for one month. And really, if you are running on diesel for one month, it is really, really enough to clean the heater without removing it outside. The only thing that you should do is to clean your filters, which will accumulate all the dirty from the system. And that was true. Okay, we removed the heater, we checked the heater, everything was fine. The only thing that we do is to blow the heater. Uh, from the inner core parts and that was all we have also indication of the transfer pump and a lot of things that we can see we can see here uh, from the control room we can see all the status of the machinery and the equipment so we can see that fuel transfer pump is in normal condition so it's set in automatic transfer this loads of transfer pump it's in automatic in any case it will start and stop automatically so um, if you have the opportunity 
to make the transfers manual it is preferably so you can control the pump you can control uh, the levels also but if you use it in automatic you must be verified that your limits are working and your pump start and stop are operating properly another thing that you should have in mind is that uh, operating pumps in automatic you should always have in mind the level of the tanks so you will not have any surprises in the night time by running the pump dry so if the level will go down the pump will not stop and the pump will run dry so before also you make your transfers your a any transfer you must heat up your tanks and always have in mind that if you are suction with your transfer pump from uh, levels that is below your transfer pump you will have always negative suction because your pump located more up from the liquid so it will be more difficult to suction and more difficult to deliver to your settling tank or the tank located so maybe it will be necessary to close the discharge a little bit depends from your pressure gauges but before you do that always calibrate your pressure gauges and your temperatures so you will know exactly the temperature of the fuel there is also some tanks some fuel tanks that uh, that there is not any thermometer available what you can do you can use some um, let's say rope some strong rope and one thermometer which will be attached on the rope and you can lower for 5 or, or 10 minutes from the sounding pipe to measure the temperature of the tank otherwise you cannot know um, the temperature of the tank and the most common problem of the vessels are the heating coils always you must be aware of the heating coils so before you're going on board you need uh, to check if the heating system of heating coils working properly and if they are not working you should take some actions to repair that but i have seen mostly in all the vessels there is same problem uh, i have fixed that kind of problems but i have seen that most of engineers do not give attention to that one so what they did they use only uh, some tanks that have heating and they used to use them always this is the solution that they give and also here we have main engine fuel oil discharge filter differential pressure so in case that something going wrong here we have high differential alarm we must direct go down and also we can check here the pressure if the pressure go down so that means our filter will be dirty and we should change to manual filters to bypass filtering so we will catch up our diesel generators and we will not have any reduction of speed and some kind of blackout so i hope my dear friends that you like this video we will continue with our engine room uh, tour and explanation in the next video i hope you like that details that we have uh, told about we will explain everything and we will see a lot of interesting uh, things together hope you will stay here and we will continue with